two, one, here we go. So how I'm going to follow this, we're going to go to the bullet page, and this will show us some really high rated bullet games. Yes, there is a mini tournament board um, from, oh wow. Uh, seeds one and two got there. There's the pawn fork. Now we're going to see a knight fork. Yeah, we see the knight fork. I did not expect uh, Bahadir to fall for this knight fork unless he has something devious planned. So he takes the, okay, the queen trade and then he takes them on f4. Then we got another knight fork there, not winning material. Well, it's up in exchange, threatening mate. Uh, if black it's careless and moves his pieces away from the back rank, which he did not do. There's the pin. Ooh, what's... Ah, okay, so there was a discovery there. Um, black's stirring up some counterplay. And equally important, um, both players are low on time. White fails to see the promotion trick there. He should have guarded the rook, just gone down the exchange and tried to hold on. Um, instead, he got mated. So he should have guarded the rook with his king and just sacked the exchange there. And yes, it's a lost end game, but maybe he would be able to save it on time. Um, White missed a chance to take Black's rook on h8. We are watching, um, oh, the 267 and 268 highest rated players um, play this game. So it should come as no surprise that they will occasionally make mistakes despite being very strong. At least if I'm reading that 267 and 268 right. Actually, I think I'm wrong there. I think that's their tournament seed, not their overall ranking. Um, in any event, yeah, white just hangs e4, hangs e3, hangs d4. It's just hanging everything and there goes. Um, and yeah. Um, I did expect play to follow like that with queen g3, rook f3. I wasn't sure about whether it'd be decisive or not, but it looks like it would be because after king e1, queen takes h1. Um, black has a continuing attack. Um, objectively, it might not be winning, but uh, black won on time. All right, so white has sacked a bishop on c4, and now we get to see a game where a player does not hang a piece in the first 10 moves. Maybe. Okay, uh, he's trying to win the pawn on e5. Now he's gonna be forced back to knight h6. Oh, white actually took on f6, that's really weird. Uh, Black's trying to be tricky and um, almost ends up losing a piece for it. Has he lost a piece? I don't think so, no. Now he's trying to get a passed pawn and stir up some kind of trouble. There's a skewer right there. He wins an exchange, but then gives up a knight on h. Okay, that's a clever way to win a pawn, but will it be enough? Um, well, if white keeps blundering pieces away and black keeps moving faster, yeah, that'll be enough. Instead of going for rook h5 and rook h1 checkmate, black has opted to play some moves and run white out of time. To each their own. But man, it's weird to see Lance lose a game. That doesn't happen very often. So here's our number one seed, Bahadir, who previously lost a game and is now ranked 60th in the event. Um, he's no longer holding his 3,000 rating we could take bets right now on whether we think he's going to get back to 3,000 by the end of the event. In any event, he knows how to checkmate with that amount of material, or at least run his opponent out of time. Next game. We got a 2,000 and a 2,100. Okay, here we go. We got the Candidate Master, King's Crusher. I think I've heard of him before. Um, so yeah, it appears that he's up positionally he's kind of in a tactical mess here okay yeah he dropped the pawn on h5 and now he's gonna get checked by this knight um, but he takes the pawn on h5 and now he moves his knight away and rook e4 is coming there's rook e4 now there's the other rook black's trying to be tricky and he does succeed in being tricky and wins a pawn wins a second pawn 
He's threatening mate if somehow he can maneuver his rooks around. He kind of missed the idea of moving the rook to the first rank, followed by rook h1, but it didn't matter. He still managed to win. Tough break for King's Crusher. All right, here we got another game with the 20, both players rated over 2,500. Well, we got a symmetrical game going here. I wonder if they've played each other before. So we can see knight a4, rook c8. Oh, okay, that's good. That's very good. Now e4. I'm sure e4 is in the cards somewhere. There it is. Ah, white completely missed that g3 was hanging, and now white's um, in dire straits. And now queen h2 is threatened. There's the queen h2. Now he wins. Oh, he's not winning g2. But he... <laughs> white hangs a rook. No, white hangs both rooks. Although the second rook hang was probably deliberate, trying to see if black was paying attention. Turns out black actually was paying attention. So... Um, Yep, a3 and b4 traps the bishop for two pawns. And now black continues development on the king's side. He's going to go crush a king, as he is wont to do so many times. Uh, and then the question is, can white stir up? Yeah, he's sacking in exchange for a pawn, trying to stir up some counterplay. Black gives up a second pawn. Uh, black takes the queen, and they're... White's not resigning because he's up on time. Unfortunately, black hung a knight, so he's going to have to sack more material to keep his initiative. Uh, Rook, or uh, Saras, assuming that queen takes g3 was going to happen there. I didn't see bishop f2, but black did run out of time. Ah, King's Crusher is streaming. Man, he must be ticked about losing those two games. There's a lot of really strong opposition in this tournament. And now we're going to see queen b6. Okay. Um, that's not queen b6. No, you wasted a tempo, buddy. You might be rated 2985, but queen a5 followed by queen c6, or queen b6 loses a tempo. And queen c7 loses another tempo, and then, yeah, you've lost your queen. That's what you get for dawdling and not making threats. Um, white missed mate in one with queen c7. And black is pushing for to try to win on time here. Is he going to be successful? Uh, we'll see. He just might. It's not so easy to checkmate um, if black has so many pieces defending his king. Yep, so you gain the f6 square. You're going to try to promote the pawn. Or try to stir some tactic, and oh, you drop your queen. GG, buddy. GG. Yeah, you, oh. Well, this should be interesting. So theoretically, the two knights could win in some positions. <laughs> oh, that's quite amusing to see. Um, this forces the players to play it out. Okay. Under FIDE rules, that I don't think that that would be a win. But apparently on Leech Us, a king and two knights is enough to checkmate. So, who knew? Um, glad I'm observing and not playing. Let's just put it that way. So knight takes bishop, queen g3, bishop d3. Oh, okay, never mind. You have to deal with the threat on the queen. Black's stirring up some counterplay. Uh, for some crazy reason, he castles kingside and hangs his knight on f5. Um, but he is up two seconds. He is up four. Um, so the question comes, how much is a knight worth in just in terms of time on the clock? Are we going to see queen d... No, we're not going to see some mate on d1. Hmm. It's not going to be easy for black to defend. Okay, so rook e5. Nope, 
Okay, I guess that drop defends the F pawn. Uh, you need to stop. Yeah, you need to both prevent White from playing C3 and prevent him from taking the pawn on B4. And do whatever you can to stir up confusion there, but that wasn't enough. Surprisingly, 2400 rated players are tricky to confuse. Who knew, right? Um, also, Super Ganondorf guy. I don't think that there is a 3000 rated player in the tournament. There was one at the beginning, but I think he's lost a few points. It's difficult to maintain a rating like that. Are we going to see 94? Yep, there's the 94, and now we're going to see pawn. Well, I thought it was going to be F takes. I was struggling to say F, and I said pawn instead. Black offers to liquidate on the DF file. Now we're going to see B6 and Rook C2. Very good. H5. Uh, it's trying to be tricky. Trying to pin the queen to the king. Pawn. Okay. Yep. Black has won the pawn on G4. I would have played King G8, aiming to try to, uh, aiming to try to get that bishop on F3 to stir up another attack toward the king. You, know, you have to trade, and now you have to see if you can manage to just win this on time. Um, because there isn't enough time to checkmate. And the Lee Chess Master goes down. Alright, who's up next? Bahadir, our number one seed, formerly 3000 rated. Um, has hung another pawn. He's played c6 and assumed that knight d5 is coming. I probably would have played a6 to try to stop white from playing a6. Um, apparently it didn't matter and apparently white didn't care to play a6 and now he's in time trouble. So basically the moral of this game is that white needs a faster mouse or he needs to play much more accurately. I assume that typically he does play accurately, but he's being the highest rated player in the event. I'm sure he's getting the highest rated opposition that you could possibly afford. And as such, this is going to be an uphill battle for him. Um, just because he's getting paired against all the strongest hyper bullet players on Leech Us, one after another after another. All right, all white's pieces are kind of tied down here. Um, Black's knights are very trickily um, stationed. They're poised to hop into just about any square on the white side of the board. White hangs his queen. He's not having a good day compared to his other days anyhow. I'm sure for any other player on the server this would be a fantastic performance. But um, yeah, another tough break. Well, at least um, losing to the tournament leader is uh, nothing to be ashamed of. What's this knight g5? Why would you do that? That's very tricky. Uh, yeah, no, I saw that. I don't think black stopped long enough to think about what knight g5 really threatened. I think he could have figured that out. Um, tough break. I think he's lost more than two games. I think he's lost like three or four, and those are just the ones that I've been observing. So possibly he's lost more than that. Okay, so Black had to defend the knight on c6, which was otherwise on pre. And now knight and rook versus rook is not something you can win within the time control, so you have to do something creative. There's the creative shot. It was the discovery against the king. Um, or sorry, the discovered check on the king, forcing uh, white to move the king away, and then knight takes rook occurred. That's the kind of stuff you have to play in hyperbullet or in time pressure online to attempt to um, win in positions that 
you can't win against best play. You have to assume that there's going to be suboptimal play from your opponent and take advantage of it. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, we have our tournament leader who's apparently dropped a rook and a pawn. He's gotten some initiative, but he might have overpressed a bit. Um, I don't know about this b6, though. I mean, sure, it does allow the bishop into the game. Okay, yeah, just trade down, trade down. Don't get mated here. I probably would have played g6 myself. Okay. Thankfully for black, uh, white hung his rook. This makes it much safer for black to pre-move all the way through the rest of the game. So there's rook e3, rook e3 again. Well, he's not doing rook e3 again. Wow. All right, so we're going to... Yeah. Black saw that. He saw um, also that if white moved to the back rank, he could just get his other rook out, or rather he could just promote his pawn to mate. So that's how he managed to find the mate in one and managed to play it before his time expired. Sometimes even playing a mate in one before time expires can be too much for the player. Um, okay, so bishop e5 was to unpin the e-pawn to try to win the queen on f5. Oh, it had a subtler point, though, of taking the pawn on h2. I don't know about taking the rook on e1. It seems like uh, if you have your rook still on h1, why not lure the king forward with something like bishop d4 check? Maybe you didn't want to see bishop g3. Maybe that's the point. So king c7, king d7, rook c6. Everything is shored up. Uh, black, had, despite having more time than white, is feeling safer sacking his pawns than trying to win by conventional means. Um, and yeah, he does does manage to win on time. So the pawn sacks, because they didn't lose the game, and because they gained just a slight amount of time on the clock, were worth it. Although arguably, maybe one could win that by conventional means, or at least shake up the opponent and force him to move slower by checking him or not checking him, as the case may be. Um, so we're going to see taking, and then... Oh, how's that bishop on c8 getting into the game? Okay, now it's clear. At least if black had played e5 instead of f5, there would have been some path for that bishop to enter, but white decided to trade his knight for the awful bishop. Um, and now... Oh! That pawn on d7 is defended. That's a problem for black. Um, yep, you gotta activate your pieces, take on e4, um, threaten mate in one, escape the mate one, threaten the mate in one again, escape the mate in one again, and there's no more mate in one threats, and now he just hangs the rook, hoping that black's not paying attention. Or at least hoping that he get manages to outblitz his opponent. Um, but Black had stored up enough time on the clock that that didn't matter. All right, we got Knight C6 again. Um, hmm. Well, I assume we're gonna see Rook C8 at some point. Or rook d8. Take a2? Nope. Wait. Huh. I thought I saw a square highlighter that shouldn't have been. Alright, so yeah, you just take twice on c4, take out there. I would have used the queen, but using the pawn's fine. I would have played a6. Um, yeah, you're not going to get a chance to promote that pawn on c1. Or promote onto the c1 square unless white does something careless. Um, yeah, it's a good idea to unhang your pieces by putting them on squares that aren't dark colored squares. And now you have to try to outmaneuver your opponent for both players' time expires. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, okay, well... That endgame was anything but instructive. Black could have played a lot more trying moves. I would not have allowed my opponent's king to move um, to the g3 square there. Um, but I guess that was a surprise to both players. Hey, welcome, Elsie.
H4. Are we, yeah, there's H5. I called it. Or at least I was trying to call it, and then it got played. So now B4. Yep. And now we have the rook on A1 hanging, uh, which has to hang because otherwise bishop C3 happens. Now queen D3. I don't... I've lost count of material here, but I get the sense that black is better. Um... Yeah, black is up a rook. Um, it's an interesting attack there. It seems to have been dulled. If I remember right, this is actually a line in the Slav, except for the part where you lose the rook on h5, which is not part of a book move or opening. Um, black hung the knight on g5, and white moved to e5 instead. And I say hung, but he actually took a piece there. And now white voluntarily traded queens in time pressure and just loses on time. So, okay, let's see another game where both players castle kingside. Oh, I would have done rook takes e3 and followed with knight takes e3. It looked much more convincing that way. Um, okay, now you got your bishop pinned. I guess that steps out of the pin. Oh, and thankfully it does not get mated. Although now all of black's pieces on the back rank are pinned. So he's got to get out of this. He's got to play king g7. Um, yeah, I guess queen f6 is forced, and now you're going to slowly unwind on the other side of the board. Meanwhile, white is pursuing nothing in particular. I uh, think that when white, no, when white played knight d4, there was no queen f1 mate because there would have been queen g1. Could have been a queen trade, could have lifted the pressure off of black. I'm not sure why white exchanged down there because white's attack looked much scarier than black's. Yeah, black just hung both of his pawns because he's trying to win on time. Will he be successful? Maybe. So this is the part where you have to pre-move your way to victory. Or at least to a draw. Um, but yeah, that certainly works. White's idea is just to push the A-pawn. So that's why you don't want to get behind in materials, because then pre-moves are harder to accomplish. You can't say, I will pre-move my king to either this square or that square, depending which one's legal. You have to pick one, and each time you pick one, there is half a chance you'll get it wrong, roughly speaking. So, yeah, you don't want to go behind material um, when there are very few pieces remaining. There are some exceptions to the rule, like if you can go down a rook versus knight and rook, that's not necessarily so bad. Oh, okay, white is winning a knight. That was well done. Um, but yeah, you don't want to go down too much material. Um, it's okay to be down a knight. Being down a bishop is a lot more painful. Being down a rook is pretty much lost. And you get the picture. Um, but the knight isn't so painful because it's difficult for the player of the knight to maneuver that around your king to force you to, or to check you or force you to lose temp by trying to um, or lose time on your clock, trying to escape checks and checkmates. It's a lot harder to accomplish with the knight than with the bishop. Although a bishop's more predictable, but um, usually if you're up the bishop, you can manage to win a pawn somewhere and cause confusion. Um, yeah, knights are tricky pieces. It's a shame the white put his queen on g3. You gotta take there, gotta push your pawns. Bishop, no, I would've used the bishop to d5 and then c4. But okay, don't get stalemated, don't get stalemate. All right, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that works. Wow, very well played, Fieglud. I don't know that I would have found that. <laughs> I 
Yeah, maybe waiting for the clock to run out might be faster. Um, problem is that even if the clock runs out, it takes some time for the clock expiring to be recognized server side and then echoed back to the client. So it's probably still faster overall to, um, to resign rather than play on. Okay, oh, I didn't see that, mate. I was about to criticize um, Black for um, missing a different mate, um, which ironically was the exact same pattern, but with the Black Queen on D2 instead of C2. Um. <laughs> oh, that piece, that bishop to F3 was a pre-move. It must have been. Either that or White has completely lost his senses. What's this knight to c5? <laughs> okay, well that's unpredictable, but that's the sort of stuff you want to play when you're playing a high-rated player. Because they're not going to predict it either. They'll predict all your predictable moves, but they aren't going to predict your random moves. Okay, so yeah, no! Don't put your pawns on dark squares. Goodness. How can you expect your moves to be unpredictable? I mean, okay, putting the pawns on dark squares is unpredictable, but then you're left with no ideas after that. I guess it was enough to upset your um, the murder castle here, but uh, that's not a good strategy. You want to leave your pawn pushes in reserve, unless pushing them freaks out your opponent. Okay, note that there's no queen h7 mate. Yeah, that was quite optimistic on White's part and lost a queen for nothing and just resigns. Nice try. Well, it depends on the site too. Um, there are different bullet ratings on each site. And somehow I get the impression that the more you play on this site, the more ratings uh, increase, which isn't exactly consistent with Glico 2. Um, but it's kind of difficult to prove such a thing. But I think that each time you play a game, you gain, I don't know, we'll say a tenth of a point or two tenths of a point or something. So if you just play enough games, your rating will increase. At least that's my interpretation. And that's how our number one seed, who was rated 3,000 at the beginning, managed to lose 100 points in the span of a few games, is that he must have just played a lot of games before the event. And now he's been put up against very tough opposition, and his rating isn't holding at all. Um... That's my take on it. I mean, yeah, 2,900 is still a pretty uh, absurd bullet rating. Um, but my main point is that bullet ratings vary from site to site. So somebody could have an 1,800 rating here, and maybe that doesn't mean the same as 1,800 on a different site or server, or um, maybe even over the board. Okay, so what we're looking at here, um, Black is playing quite docile moves. He's getting pushed around quite a bit. He's keeping his options open, but I don't know that that's suiting him well. Take e5? Alright. You know, we didn't have queen f5. Black immediately saw and prevented queen f5 with um, g6. However, Black's been playing a little bit too slowly, uh, so unless he comes up with something really tricky here, it's over. Oh, he's going for stalemate. And big surprise, the 2700 sees the mate in one. Ha! What's this opening from White? Like, I know you have to surprise your opponent, but unless you've been practicing this system, it doesn't benefit you to play these moves. Unless you're just saying that there's some minimal chance that you might trick your opponent in the opening 
and that that's your best shot. Yep, that's why you don't play this kind of stuff. It's because you don't know it any better than your opponent does. And you're playing to your own weakness, and that just doesn't work. Just in general. I mean, sometimes, maybe 1 in 10, maybe 1 in 100 times it'll pay out. And it'll be amazing when it does pay out. And it'll be totally worth it at that time, just for that one game. But in general, don't play to your own weaknesses. Bishop g5. No. You're supposed to put the bishop on g5. Now where's your bishop going? Are you just trying to win on time or something? Because that's not going to work. Well, maybe it will, because you're rated 2,500. But um, most players would not be able to win that on time. Yep. And black has hung his everything. <laughs> Knight c4 was not brilliant. Oh, that's really a shame. Quite a pity there. The Llama Lord. All right, here we go with Amadon. Okay, we got a Gambit. Castle. All right. Just keep exchanging. Good, good. Just, yep, Knight d7 and Queen f No, got it. Okay, yeah, that works. I was going to say you had to play g6 there. Oh, well, we might not see the end of the Llama Lord's game. We'll have to ask him how it went afterward. I'm sorry that it's cut out. Um, I am kind of a fan of his. Um, he does play some good chess. Um, take on e7. Oh, what's this? No, no, you've given away a piece. Although maybe the other way also lost a piece. Um, okay. Black's tied up. He's trading on g5. Now e5 is accessible again. White forgot to develop his rook. Still forgetting. He's got this rook on a1. Yeah, he found it. There it is. Unfortunately, by the time he found it, he hung his knight on e4. So, it's important to use all your pieces, because that's what freaks out your opponent the most. Um, just saying. <laughs> you gotta use all your pieces because if you don't start attacking your opponent will start attacking you have to take the initiative there we go there's the murder castle taking the initiative he allowed white to play e6 white missed the e6 shot and now white's got kind of a tricky position because he's got a bishop pair in a closed system um, black did manage what was that? That was black just hanging a piece, right? Yeah, that's just black hanging a piece. I was wondering, did that change the material balance? Because if not, black just gave up a piece for no reason other than to make his position worse. Um, maybe try to win some time on the clock, but almost always trying to win time on the clock uh, gets you in huge trouble in the position and does not pay out. And such uh, helped to be the case here as well. Yeah, I think, at least in my case, it's more interesting to watch and commentate on the games than play, so I'm not playing, but others are welcome to play. Maybe you'll glean a little bit of advice from um, my rambling. Ooh, okay. That's a nice tactic, although g5 hangs. Oh, but queen e6 mate. Wow, that's brilliant. Really well played, Lance. Really well calculated. Frighteningly accurate. Um, but sometimes players have their moments of genius. So he's up two seconds. Now he's up one and a half, up two, up three, and now time is equal, and he's getting mated. So, yeah, he did play some really flashy opening play, 
Unfortunately, after the queen trade, everything went south. So, I don't know, if you're trying to put pressure on your opponent, both on the clock and on the board, queen trades don't always help in that respect. You know, I have to ask the Lama Lord how he did against Amadon after the event. That's really cool that he got paired up like that. Um, and better him than me. <laughs> you know, I play some decent bullet, but um, chess is hard. So knight f5 is very well placed. Black is trying to revive this knight e2, knight d3 threat stuff but he isn't willing to give up the knight because it's only attacking piece. Um, so he's just continuing to play kind of without a direct objective. Um, maybe part of the reason for that is the enormous time crunch he's in. Wow, he found king takes g4. <laughs> it was not enough to save him. Can you imagine though, hyperbullet three check chess? How amazing would that be? Okay, black has sacked two pawns on the king's side. Ooh, what was this knight d3? I guess that was forced. And there goes the rook on h1. <laughs> Lance has been playing that way in previous games of this event, so he is kind of familiar with this setup. Which sounds completely ridiculous. And there goes this rook on a1, a8. Um, he's trying to mate on f1. Castle. Castle. Okay, you did not castle. And now you face the sadness and consequences of not castling. Namely that f1 is kind of difficult to protect. It takes some time to calculate these things. You trade the rooks but you're down on time, so you actually needed that rook to go give mate. And now you just lose on time. I mean, the only way he could hold this is if he does knight takes a6, and then king takes e2. And he blew it. Tough break. Ooh. Oh, I missed that the pawn on d5 was doing the fork. Okay, the knight wins uh, exchange. Um, and with that, since black isn't attacking anything, you know, there goes the game. Black correctly resigns that because he can't manage to attack his opponent's king. And without a king threat, and without some way of winning material plausibly, um, just makes sense to hang, uh, throw in the towel at that point. Okay, white has closed the center. Uh, white's kind of a, well, he's leaving his options open. He's kind of afraid of what black's doing, but more importantly, trying to leave black guessing. Uh, <laughs> that protects both rooks. White gets a pass pawn. He needs to get his other rook to d1 to protect this pawn. Uh, he pushed d6, which was, which was very risky because there could have gone his most advanced ad advantage, if you will. Um, queen d5 is coming. There it is. Going to move the king forward. Don't get mated. Knight f4. Okay, well, actually, rook f5 is really clever. You have to take, and you have, now you've successfully defended the pawn, trade the pawns, king... Uh, yeah, that king move does make a lot of sense. This is actually very well played for bullet endgames. Um, I could criticize knight e1 a little bit, um, just on account of it allows king f2, king g1, and 
black does have counterplay, or at least has chances to promote a pawn, then it's a little bit tricky. Objectively, it doesn't actually improve on the game, but why take the risk? Um, it would have been safer to just push the pawn in the center of the board, but that's not what happened. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm not playing Bullet. I'm watching... There is a prize money tournament taking place. Um, I think it's hosted by Bit Chess, which um, is an organization that uh, has some appreciation for Bitcoins and for chess. And that's all I know about them. Just full disclosure there. Um, Oh, that queen hang was not very good. Yep, and then there's mate in one and thrick c1. Black. Oh, I'm sorry. That That is checkmate. Because the bishop on b7 guards h1. Okay, white plays some unpredictable moves. Black's going to play d6 to free his bishop. And he plays queen d6 because he's a coward. Um. Uh, black's cowardice means that white has more time to plan and maneuver and play random um, moves, which can confuse his opponent. Uh, yep, take g4, take h3, knight e4, knight... Oh, I was going to say queen g5, but never mind. But that actually wins material, now take the rook. And now you just... Well, okay, I guess you could go for mate. I would try to push the d-pawn. It's a nice, simple plan that you can pre-move, but, um, yeah, you go for mate. Why not? Sorry, I'm doing the best I can, Zug. Uh, all right, so, yep, there, and now we're going to see rook h6 to follow. I was expecting king h5 and then knight f4, which would have been check, and then king h4 and then... Rook h6, but... Okay, so white has an easy, easy checkmate. And by that, I mean just go push your pawn, get a queen, don't stalemate. Um, yeah, okay, you can miss mate in one a few times. And by few, I mean probably just once, but... Um, yeah, that works. I guess if you're in that much time pressure, you don't have to find the mate in one. You just need to find anything that works. It is worth noting that queen c1 would have been mate in one. I'll have to keep that in my memory bank if I ever see a similar position in my own game. Uh, where my opponent's king is all the way next to my king and trapped by my pawns. That could be a useful trick, especially because it does not involve moving the queen very far across the board. Okay, black's going to keep the bishop, right? Nope. <laughs> so not only does he trade the bishop for the knight, he takes multiple seconds to do it. Knight takes, yep. yep. He's paying attention, but he's in over his head at this point. There's no escape. At least not if his opponent is, like, half awake and moving. This is the slowest hyperbolic game I've ever seen. My goodness. Oh, okay. So. Okay, just try to keep black guessing. Just try to keep him guessing. Queen takes, queen check. Okay. There's the queen check. Uh, the uh, queen's pinned, so white's out of options. Wow. I don't know why that game was so slow. Maybe both players were lagging or something. Um, so are we going to see knight e5? No, we're not. So white's knight does manage to re-enter the game because black failed to play knight e5. Uh, white now controls the center, and black is shuffling and manages to lose the bishop. 
and walks into a knight fork. Another example of why you don't want to play any random moves when there are actual plans you could be executing. They don't have to be good plans, but they need to be at least two moves deep. Yep, so take that, take that. Uh, I would have played to c6. I would have been wrong to do so, but my justification was that I thought the king could move to d7 or d8 to protect the bishop um, and try to complicate that. But yeah, no, the rook to the seventh rank is the strongest move, of course. But it takes a little while to figure that out. Okay, that was... We've got fire on board at the moment. Um... Yeah, White gave up material to do this, but that's okay, because he's leaving Black guessing. <laughs> oh, White missed Pawn Takes Knight, which would have been decisive, but probably would have taken time to find. No, don't push one pawn at a time. That never works. Ever. You need to push them in coordination with each other. Are we going to see some player win on time? Nope. Nice try. So at this point, we have 15 minutes left in the event. Queen trades. Whoa. Whoa, what is this? What kind of sack is that? I mean, it's something to confuse the opponent, but no. Don't play that way. Okay, let's get a real game. Take the pawn? Take the knight? No, I could have taken the knight. Okay, maybe your opponent's seen that position after taking the knight before, but... The fewer pieces, the easier it is for you to calculate. Um... So play to your strengths. Don't play to your don't attempt to play to your opponent's weaknesses if you don't know what those are. Okay, yeah, now that knight c4 is a one move threat. Those don't tend to be very effective. Okay, f7's loose. Now if white could somehow Yeah. I don't know, man. There goes the knight. I mean, even given Black's 2800 rating, he's not going to be able to stir up very much trouble here. You have triple on the file, take a7, take a7, now uh, triple back on the file, rook e2, rook e2, there it is, rook takes, rook takes, rook, t oh, you missed rook takes rook, buddy, you missed pawn takes rook, you missed king takes rook. I guess you're in time trouble, so I forgive it all, but, oh man. Being up a rook helps when you're trying to win on time. So, I know you can't predict every time that your opponent's going to hang a rook. And by your opponent, I mean white was hanging the rook. Or just, not hanging the rook, but he was going into a lost position. And you don't expect that he's going to go willingly like he did. Um many weaker players would willingly trade off into a lost end game and you would expect that a 2800 rated player would not attempt such a thing but he did attempt it probably because you didn't expect it all right bishop moves no 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 so that now the rook is or now the bishop on c1's pinned Oof. yep there's a doubling on the e file as long as black doesn't get mated on the back rank, he should be winning. And white resigns. I would have tried to give some sort of back rank mate threat, and I guess that's what b4 was directed at, trying to lure the bishop somehow or deflect it off the diagonal and maybe do some subtle threat. Uh, Opper's good. He's got the whole psychology thing down, and in addition to just being a, able to move quickly. He knows what his opponent's going to play before his opponent plays it. 
He's just that good. No, you don't let the trade on h5 happen. Well, okay. I stand corrected because the knight on e5 would cause a queen trap if queen takes h5. That's really subtle stuff. I've got to wonder, who is this opera raisin? I'm most curious who this player is. Just like that kind of play is pretty fantastic. I'm not even accusing or anything. I'm, I'm just curious. Like, who is this guy who's able... He's played so much chess that he knows where the queen traps are at. I suspect that he's a very strong player in chess in general. Alright, so black sacks a rook, and all of his pieces, other than knight c6 and queen c3, are just sitting on the back rank waiting for the game to start um, but I guess that's a way you can play chess if your opponent doesn't have any pawns and can't find a pawn break and doesn't know how to break into your position yeah no I wouldn't have traded or I wouldn't have traded in that manner I wouldn't have played Knight e6 um, would have traded on g6 and tried like queen f7 or something to fork things. Um, okay, that protects h2 in a sense, but there was rook takes h2. Actually, it was just mate, mate and one. Uh, so that's a tough break for black for missing the mate and one. Well, so here's the thing. You may be gaining a second every time you sack a piece. So, if you're going to sack all your pieces to try to win on time, um, you better have a lot of pieces. And sometimes you can do that, uh, but usually you don't have enough pieces that you can just sack them all to win on time. There are cases where that does work, but by and far and large, it's not... Well, the other factor is... Your opponent knows that you're thinking about doing that, right? So your opponent can expect, oh, he's probably just going to sack something to try to disturb me because he has no chances to actually win the position by playing normal moves. Yeah, bishop g5 was clever there, trying to um, win the rook. And black's rook and knight weren't enough to force mate, especially because white has a rook to defend. Um... But yeah, that bishop g5 was clever, winning some time. Because black had only two seconds left, and you saw he took a second to take the bishop on g5. And so that took him down to one second. Um, but yeah, usually your opponent suspects that, oh, he's going to sack a piece right about here, because his position is lost. And so the only reason he would play on is he's going to try to win on time. And if he's going to try to do that, I know what move he's going to play. So, piece sacks tend to be pretty predictable. Um, knight e2. Uh, just because that position was frustrating there, and if black managed to trade bishop for a knight, white's hanging all his pawns, so he had to try knight d2 anyway. Uh, rook g1, rook g4. Nope. Oh, wait, no. He doesn't have the bishop on e4 anymore, so there's no mate threat. All right, so he's going to push f3 uh, since he can't promote because the white's two rooks. He has to attempt to win the g-pawn. And white uh, acquiesced to the pressure. He failed to defend his g2-pawn. And even had he defended g2, the black rooks would have sidestepped out of the way of their pawns, and the f-pawn would have promoted. So here we have a Karo Khan where, um, uh, where black has just avoided moving pawns in the center. 
I still call it a Karo Khan though because um, uh, Black wasn't. I don't know. He wasn't able to contest the center by normal means. White put both of his pieces on the king's side, both of his knights on the king's side, and Black played h5. So in my mind, that's a Karo. Bishop takes bishop, maybe. Ah, the, even better. All right. Then why would you not take um, the bishop? Pawn takes bishop looked really uh, appetizing there. Um, I guess White's just in time pressure and he's not considering all his possibilities. Um, yeah. I guess those last few moves were forced, but until that point, he had some alternatives he could have played. Could have been a lot more interesting or complicated. All right, we're going to castle. Nope, we're going to defer castling. We're still deferring castling. Now trade and then queen moves and then castle the other way. Okay, and that's a way to be tricky for sure, but um, now that we're in an endgame, that whole castling shtick didn't really matter. Uh, it cost white maybe a second thinking about all that. Or at least it cost white more time to think about it than it cost black. Uh, I guess the benefit of having done that weird castling maneuver is you tricked if you could use that word you tricked white into trading queens i don't know if that would be fair to describe it that way but no no you no okay man you're really trying to win this on time that's not gonna work buddy yeah and now white just takes all your pawns and promotes a c pawn And we have a 2500 who does not know how to push a pawn. Okay. That's okay. It's been a long tournament. Um, there's four minutes remaining. I'm sure nerves, people are must be nervous, but my goodness. When you have a simple, obvious plan of pushing a pawn, promoting it, usually there's enough time to get the pawn to the other side of the board and then check your opponent a few times and just win on time. Queen b6, queen b6, there it is. All right, so we're going to see bishop b5. No. We see queen b5. It's something, I guess. Is black going to sack some material here? He's getting really cramped. Oh, why would white take that? I guess. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I understand any of these... Uh, queen side maneuvers. There goes the queen. Um, Rook b2. Okay, white's trying to win on time. White is definitely going for a time win here, as he's just shuffling back and forth and hoping that black either moves slowly or hangs to something. Rook, yeah, bishop f2, you have to stop the passed pawn, move the rook, check the king, do something tricky. Because if you don't start making plans, your opponent will. Hey, Fairy, you're catching the tail end of this tournament. I assume there's two minutes remaining. Here we have um, players ranked number two and three duking it out in some weird gambit opening. Which, okay, we've kind of transposed back into a Banco where White doesn't have an E-pawn. Um which has pluses and minuses because now white has places to he's not bound to try to defend an e-pawn anymore um. <laughs> both players are attacking without any restraint okay there's the queen trade now bishop e7 bishop e7 no he misses it that's too bad um okay and this, again, to my point, that if you don't make plans, your opponent will. And so, yeah, black is playing with purpose, and white's shuffling. And he's managed to hold on to a little bit of time on his clock, but it... I mean, okay, so he managed to win a rook, too. Um, black did his little Jedi mind trick to win the rook back. Now he checks and takes the bishop, and, you know, he probably could have taken the rook there. That probably would have worked too. Um, I don't know. 
I saw there was some big controversy in a forum about uh, two players not liking each other very much or something like that. I didn't actually read the whole thing. I did read No Joke's post, which I thought was excellent, but yeah, I don't really know what's going on in that particular dilemma because I didn't see the game. We're going to take the pawn. Knight takes pawn would have won. Would have been trivially won endgame. But I guess if you're trying to force mate before the timer, or before the tournament timer expires, you know, tournament timer just expired. Um, and with that, let's check out the results of the tournament.